February and March together here. February had our outreach where we go out and go door to door, our Matthew 10 and prayer ministry. Uh, that month we did for a couple months, we started doing two in a month. We would do a four o'clock and a six o'clock outreach. And uh, because of daylight savings time had not kicked in yet and it gets darker quite a bit earlier and I usually get off work right before six and that's why we usually do Saturday nights at six the last Saturday for Saturday month we do a six o'clock outreach well one of the brothers and some of the people that um, took part in it said you know it'd be cool if we went out while it was still a light out and I said hey that's great I just can't go because I get off of work and it's already getting kind of dark um, and one of the brothers stepped up and said hey, I'd be willing to go out early you know until the weather gets better and brighter and uh, so I said, great, I definitely don't have any problem with anybody going out. So they set up to do both four and six. I would do the six when I got off, and they could do four before. And uh, it turns out February, <clears throat> when they went out, four and six, they went out at four, had a good time. Uh, I guess they had a great time of fellowship, had some good prayer, uh, both in Matthew 10. I wasn't there, obviously, but I got the updates. And uh, even got to share with a, they met an interesting fellow, who spent a lot of time, an older gentleman, um, a couple brothers, uh, Pat and Rod, got went in, delivered a lot of door-to-door, -door, had a lot of interactions, had some great um, feedback. But one one guy they spent a good long time with, just fellowshipping with, praying for him, and the guy was encouraged and uplifted by them coming by his house. And, and we get that sometimes, and it was just great testimony for me to hear. Um, it was also great testimony to hear that they're able to pray for some people and uh, be able to reach out and touch lives and be able to say they. Said we delivered all our packages, which was always cool to hear because just hearing that te testimony alone, when we give out our packages with the New Testament, this the big question DVD and an invitation to uh, get a hold of us with any questions we will have when when they're able to say you know we got all our packages out, which they basically covered whole street, which is about 20 packages probably. I'm encouraged even in just that alone because that's what we plan to do is to go out and spread the gospel. When we get those out to people, get them in people's hands or on their door, door we know that the gospel is being spread. And then they had these great interactions with folks. And of course, I can't give any deep details because I wasn't there. But I was encouraged that even when I, that was one of the greatest encouraging things, I couldn't be there. And yet people went out, had a great time. And I say that not because I don't want to sound at all like anything bears on me. In fact, I say this that I was so happy and so blessed because I would hope that more people would go out and do this and not let me be the impetus that they're only going by the impetus of God moving on by His Holy Spirit on their hearts. And that's what these brothers and sisters who came together what were doing. And that's what's so cool is to be able to see that it isn't about me and I've got to watch out so that I never think that it is about me it's always about God it's about him moving on people's hearts and I'm so blessed to see nights like this it manifested so abundantly clearly because I couldn't be part of it and it was made even more clear because no one showed up for the six o'clock the people went out at four and no one came to go out at six so I had nobody to go with me at six o'clock so I was kind of bummed because I didn't get to go because I didn't get to have anybody partner up with me so I spent some time in prayer and just uh, fellowship with the folks when they'd come back as they were there about when I got there at 6 and just hearing what, what went on and I was encouraged and blessed and so February was interesting and in that I got updates of stuff going on for our first time I've never had been getting the updates um, for a 4 o'clock session without having people go out at 6 so that was just new and yes I was personally kind of bummed because I wanted people to come so that I could go out with them but uh, I was encouraged because see the work of God happening with others that I wasn't even uh, taking any part in. It was just, just cool to hear the testimony of God working out there as well and, and getting the, the report. That being said, <clears throat> finished up. That was February. March comes along. Because of daylight savings having been kicked back in, decided to cancel the 4 o'clock one, and the brother who was kind of heading that up was going to be out of town, so said, let's just go back to regular 6 o'clock, and sure enough, weather was nice, the sun was out longer, basically, so we were able to go out. In March, I went out for the first time with my uh, brother Max. He went with me for the first time, so it was really cool, because he'd never gone out before, so it was a blessing to go out there with him. He'd gone up to U of O with me to do our college outreach that we've been doing before, but he'd never done this, so he came out, had the, had the time off from work, and went out with me door to door. We ran into a couple of young guys, interesting, ran into a couple of kids, I call them kids, I guess I'm getting older, said they're about 23, but uh, 
I think they were underage. They were drinking some beer and throwing a baseball around the streets. I had to have a nice conversation with them, but they were kind of flippant and arrogant and, and a little ornery. <clears throat> but one of the guys, it was I was really bummed at first that we couldn't get more in depth with these guys, having talked with them. But when I left, I really felt bummed because I was talking to him, and he finally confronted me um, towards the end and said, "So, what are you? T are you telling me that I'm not a good, good person?" And I told him, I said. Well, we kind of went over that already because I had actually gone through the good person test with him. And you know, after him saying he thought he was good and all this stuff and showing him the Bible says he's not good. You know, he lies, he's stolen things, he's, you know, used the Lord's name in vain. He's, you know, lusted and all the things that we talk about in the good person test, he'd shown that he was not good. But it kind of sunk with him there finally. Towards the end, he kind of looked at me hardcore and just so you're saying I'm not a good person. I'm saying, well, you made this admissions by the Bible saying you're not a good person. So he turns and starts stalking off. And he's like... I said, so what's the deal? You don't want to talk anymore or whatever? And he goes, hey, if you're just telling me I'm not a good person, I don't want to talk to you. I don't have anything to do with you. And I'm like, these are things you're admitting. I wasn't telling you you're not a good person. These are what the Bible says that these things that you admitted you wouldn't be good. But he said, I don't want to hear anything. If you think if you think God says I'm not a good person, I'm not a good person. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I said, okay, but seriously think about, think about the Word of God. And I was kind of bummed that he walked away because I wanted to get through the, the whole thing, be able to bring the good news, but he didn't want to hear it. He stalked off, and he was upset. Um, I think he just tired of talking to me and made his excuse. He didn't get angry or anything. He just, oh, I don't want to talk to you then. Just kind of walked away. But in the end, I look back and I go, you know what? That was obviously what the Lord wanted. He wanted him to be able to walk away and know that, hey, the Bible says you're not good. You're not okay. You need Jesus Christ. You need forgiveness. You need to know that you're not good. And of course my prayer, prayer was that would weigh on that young man and his friend. Weigh on them to understand that they're not good. That their ideas of goodness are not what stands right with God. And I'm hoping that that salty conversation would produce a thirst in them from the word of God. Getting there being the salt. And uh... Hopefully they'll let the light come in and shine in their hearts through other professions. Just like Jesus tells us in the Bible, specifically the Apostle Paul says that some plant, others water, but yet it's God who brings the increase. So knowing a little bit about these guys, knowing that they had, had church experience, and he had told me about his church experience, I know that seed had been planted before. I was out there planting more seed or watering current seed. I don't know, but my prayer, like with any, anybody we go out to, is that God will bring the increase to eternal life in many folks. After we left, those guys went up the street, and the first house we went to, to where we chatted with somebody, met a guy there who had been going to church for many years, says he's a believer. When I asked him what it meant to be a believer and all that, he couldn't really give a good answer. But I got to share with him about what it is with the things are with Christ, what it means to be a believer, someone who loves Christ, someone who's repented and trusted in Him, and kind of came at him with the idea of well, how would you share with somebody, especially if you knew the person, you knew they didn't know God, how would you share with them? He just didn't know at all, and I got to confer, you know, get, give him some comfort in how to do that, and try to see where he was at, and I believe he's a confused, not very um, deeply informed uh, brother, but uh I think that the Lord had me there to be able to comfort and to help him. He's going through, he's a single dad, dad raising girls. Um, felt like he's been shunned by a lot of people in church. A lot of different things. I think he's had a rough go with some things. I think he's carrying some heavy burdens. And I, I just consoled him in in that he himself, just like Jesus said, come come with those heavy burdens. He can come to Christ with those. Because I don't ever leave anybody in a place where I'm, I'm because I'm not the judge. I don't know who is going to heaven and who is not. I only know that God is the judge and that he calls people to repentance and faith. And I told him, you know, bring it all to God, man. I was able to talk with him. What I heard from him seemed to, seemed to me like is I believe the guy was a, a believer, just a one who needs some better foundation, needs some shoring up and needs to be more plugged in with church and uh, it was just a real blessing to talk to him and meet his family, to be able to encourage him. He let us pray for him. And uh, he even said he'd probably come, come to church next day. Didn't see him at church, um, hoping he went to his regular church that he was semi-attending. 
Uh, I don't know, but it was cool to meet this guy, to be able to pray for him, to be able to share the love of Christ, and yet the solid truth and the holiness of God, and that there's definitely a judgment for those who are not right with God, and the necessity of us as believers needing to share that message. And uh, he was encouraged by us being out there, and it was a great time. Went up and down the street, got out all but one of our packages, which was probably about 15 or 16 of them, had good conversation with lots of folks, just like usual, ran into folks who just seemingly confused by um, what the, the message of the gospel is, a, a, a misconstrued idea of what it means to be a Christian. That's always been kind of disconcerting. Um, that's why we're out there, though. Uh, it just encourages me to know we're doing the right thing because... I don't know how many times I run into people and they say they're even Christians, they say that they're right with God, or they feel they're they're fine, and when you go through like the good per person test and you ask them about what it is to be a Christian, what does it mean to be saved, and how that takes place, and they just don't have a clue, and it's all so much based on, well, you got to be a good person and try to do the right thing, and you know, live right, and it's just amazing how many people who are supposedly even, they're professing Christians who just do not have a solid biblical understanding and they do not have a doctrinally sound faith and so they need to know what the Bible says so I'm encouraged that we get to go out and do that and share that with folks and uh, point them to the true Savior not the one that they've made up in their mind through whatever right ideas so that was March on our Matthew 10 and outreach and it was great had some other people go out do some stuff other teams went out it was a good night people praying for us had some great intercessory moments of prayer people shared with us how the lord was working in them there both our matthew 10 and prayer ministries together on those nights are always a blessing i encourage you if you're watching this locally um come out with us on the fourth saturday come out and share the gospel with us come down and pray for us so that we can see the seed continually spread and we can see God bring an increase to his flock uh, till the day he decides to take us all to be with himself. So thank you so much for listening. Hope you've enjoyed this. God bless. Have a great day.